So in the last video, we talked about expected present discounted value. In this video, we're just going to do an introduction to the bond market. And then we'll talk about bond prices, bond yields uh, in the next video. So bonds, remember, are just loans, right? But they are loans that are standardized so that, you know, a company or a government can raise a lot of money by, instead of asking for the loan from, you know, one investor, can get the loan from lots of investors, right? And so, uh, and then the terms of the bond are all the same for those loans. And so you don't need to sort of do the, the due diligence and all of the details of a loan for every investor, right? It's all the same. So bonds vary in a lot of different ways, but the two main ways are maturity and risk, right? And so maturity is the length of the bond, the length of the loan. And so it can be anything from three months to 30 years. Um, and obviously that's going to make a difference in terms of, you know, how much interest you're going to ask for. Um, and it's also going to be related to the second issue, which is risk, right? Because there is a higher risk on a longer term loan, both risk in terms of not being paid back, right? Default or also risk in terms of uh, inflation, right? Inflation could be different than what the issuer and the buyer uh, expect, and so that could change the, the yield. So risk um, is both about default, right? That's the biggest risk, is that you're gonna be holding a bond that the um, borrower can no longer pay back. Um, and that's true for both government bonds and corporate bonds, but of course it's a little more common for corporate bonds um, than government bonds. Um, and then of course there's the, the price risk about you know, what you can sell it for um, before maturity, because there is a whole market for bonds that haven't reached maturity yet, right? You might own a 30 year bond um, for five years and decide, okay, I don't wanna hold this bond anymore. I'd prefer to sell it. But what you can sell it for depends on the interest rate that the bond is paying, what current interest rates are, current feelings about the risk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so you have to think about that risk as well. So there's gonna be a lot of terms uh, here. I think they're sort of, it's nice to have them you know, on the slides. I don't necessarily expect you to memorize each and every one. Um, so yield to maturity or yield is the interest rate, right? Associated with bonds of different maturities. So we're going to talk about the yield curve for government bonds, um, where you sort of graph the yield for the shortest term bonds to the longest term bonds. Um, short term interest rates are yields on bonds with usually a year or less. Remember that uh, treasury bills are uh, US government bonds with a, a year or less uh, maturity. Uh, treasury bonds are for more than a year. So long-term interest rates are yields on bonds with longer maturity than a year. And then the term structure of interest rates or yield curves is that relationship between maturity and yield. Um, and from a macro perspective, generally we would expect uh, interest rates to be lower on short-term uh, bonds and higher on long-term bonds. Um, that is usually the case, but not always the case. And an inverted yield curve where interest rates are higher on the short-term bonds is often a sign uh, of a recession or an upcoming recession. Um, so here are the yield curves for you know, November 2000 and June 2001. Um, and you can see in November 2000, right before uh, that sort of dot-com uh, recession started, um, it was sloping downward, right? Um, and that was a, a sign that we might have a recession and then once the recession was over in June 2001, we had a very upward sloping uh, yield curve, which is much more normal. Um, I will say, you know, currently we have an upward sloping yield curve, but it's kind of flat um, because interest rates are very low still right now. Um, but you can actually look that up. You can get it from, uh, you can actually just plug in yield curve and it will take you, I think it's the Federal Reserve that gives it, uh, sort of updates it daily. So a little bit more vocabulary. So as we've talked about, right, government bonds are bonds issued by the government. Um, so in the United States, the federal government issues treasury bonds and treasury bills, um, but we also have state and city governments issuing bonds, which are usually referred to jointly as municipal bonds. 
Corporate bonds are bonds issued by firms. Um, so when they want to raise money uh, on the bond market. Um, bond ratings are ratings for default risk. And so there are three main companies that do it, Standard & Poor, Moody's, and Fitch. Um, and they go everything from AAA all the way down to like D. D means like they've defaulted. Um, like and anything sort of below the sort of middle Bs are usually called junk bonds. Um, and if you're if it's a junk bond, you're going to have to pay really high interest rates because there's a really high probability that you're going to default. Um, and then the risk premium is sort of the difference between those really safe bonds like the you know treasury bills and treasury bonds, which are all sort of you know considered the gold standard, uh, and the interest rates that the more risky bonds, corporate bonds, have to pay. Um, of course, there can be a, a risk premium between, say, U.S. government bonds and bonds of other countries as well, if investors think those other countries are more likely to default. Um, discount bonds are bonds that promise a single payment at maturity. So, like, it might be a year. So, like, you might have a bond that has a face value of $1,000, and you're going to buy it for $950 right now, right? And so you, you pay $950 now. It doesn't pay any interest for the year, but then you get $1,000 at the end. And so the interest is really, the, you know, uh, $500. I forget what I said we were paying. $950 to so the $50 um, that uh, you would get um, above and beyond what you paid. Um, that's opposed to coupon bonds, right? So coupon bonds, which tend to be longer term bonds, are bonds that promise multiple payments, um, maybe every quarter, maybe every year and then one payment at the end. And so the, those payments that you get regularly are called coupon payments. The coupon rate is the ratio of the coupon payments to the face value. And then the current yield is the ratio of the coupon payment to the current price of the bond, right? Not necessarily to the face value of the bond. Um, and so it's often been said that bond markets are more complicated than stock markets because of all the different types of bonds and because of all the sort of combinations and permutations uh, that can happen with all the, you know, bond, coupon bonds, uh, payments, rates, yields, etc. Um, and so there's a lot of things that go on in terms of how much a bond is actually worth. Um, the life is the amount of time left until the bond matures, right? So if it's a 10-year bond and it's been three years since it was issued, its life is seven years. Um, so obviously that's going to affect how much you'd be willing to pay for it. Um, and as we said, treasury bills are just U.S. government bonds with a maturity up to one year. Um, treasury notes. Okay, so I don't see the term treasury notes that much, but I guess technically these are the bonds with a maturity of one to ten years. And then treasury bonds are bonds with a maturity of ten or more years. Um, the term premium is the premium associated with longer maturities, right? So we said the risk premium is about default. The term premium is, say, the difference between a you know, 10-year treasury bond and a one-year treasury bill, or even a 30-year treasury bond and a five-year treasury note. Um, index bonds are bonds that promise payments adjusted for inflation. So the most common, in fact, I don't really know of any other ones, is the treasury inflected inflation protected securities, uh, which are usually just called TIPS. Um, and so these will pay you a uh, interest rate, which is going to be smaller, right, than the interest rate on a regular bond, but then they're also going to pay you the inflation rate. So it might be like, okay, we'll pay you, you know, 0.5% uh, plus inflation. So if inflation is 2%, then you'll get approximately 2.5%. But if inflation is 5%, then you'll get 5.5%. So it's a way for investors to protect themselves against the risk of inflation, which is a risk that they have to think about a lot if they're buying just regular nominal bonds.